Major Japanese milk producers have announced that screening tests for radiation will soon begin at about 100 dairy factories. This is in response to growing concerns among consumers. Municipalities have been conducting radiation checks before raw milk goes to dairies, but only a few have been checking the milk afterward. Ever since the Health and Welfare Ministry decided to strengthen food safety standards for milk from April, there has been a growing call from consumers for more screening. Under the tougher standards, milk will be allowed to contain 50 becquerels per kilogram, one quarter the current permissible level. The Japan Dairy Industry Association says the screening will be conducted in Tokyo and 16 prefectures in eastern Japan. It will announce the results by the end of this month. Deaths from snow-related accidents are increasing at a faster pace in Japan as heavy snowfall hits northern parts of the country. The Fire and Disaster Management Agency says 51 people have died in snow-related incidents so far this winter, excluding traffic accidents. 30 of them have died in the past 15 days. About 70% of the victims were people aged 65 or older. Nearly 90% of the accidents occurred while victims were clearing snow from the roofs of their homes or other places. Weather officials warned that the heavy snow will continue along the Sea of Japan coast until Thursday. The head of a team of nuclear inspectors says they plan to visit Iran again to further investigate its suspected nuclear arms program. The team led by Herman Nackert's Deputy Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency ended a three-day mission on Tuesday and returned to the agency's headquarters in Vienna on Wednesday. Nackert said his inspectors had intensive discussions with the Iranian side, but he declined to give details including whether they had visited nuclear facilities. He said there is a lot of work to be done and that the team plans another trip in the very near future. The results of the IAEA mission are scheduled to be presented at a regular board meeting in March. I hope you all are doing well. Um, this is off RT America, so I thought it would show up and I haven't seen it. I'm going to talk about it. I thought they would have put it out on their YouTube site. California nuclear plant shuts down over radioactive leaks, uh, published the first at 2223 minutes. A leak at the Southern Cal nuclear facility that regularly serves power to 1.4 million households has caused the plant to shut down a reactor. Despite officials assisting that everything will be perfectly all right at the San, o the San Ono Fire nuclear site, this is not the first time as of late that power plants have raised serious questions about their safety in America. And we currently got them going on from the East Coast down to Chicago land on the Great Lakes over to the West Coast. A leaking radioactive steam at least um, we're gonna just uh, summarize this because I want to jump over to another California situation uh, speaking on the alleged minuteness of the leak uh, Alexander tells LA Times that it wouldn't even qualify as the least severe infraction under the guidelines set up by the US NRC Regardless, the plant located south of San Clemente, California, reported the incident to them anyway. Um, and and it, the reason some say, here, here's what I wanted to get to, boom, boom, boom. Authorities at the San Onfray say that the leak has yet to spread outside the plant. But should that happen, the consequences could be catastrophic. That's what they're saying. It hasn't spread outside, but should it happen, the consequences could be catastrophic. And then it reminds me uh, something else going on uh, a little up the coast in California today, real time. Um, 200 plus and counting kids have been sent home from school today, uh, sick, throwing up some passing out and fainting and this was off of abc7news.com uh, the, the vid may play I thought it would give me the link to the story and it's going to bring me back to the live posting or the replay of the vid um, but as soon as this loads up I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that 
you can look and do it for yourself since I'm waiting for something that isn't in front of me but you got 200 plus people sick the school uh, that I'm speaking of, and I don't have it in front of me, will be closed tomorrow. The health inspector ins uh, is insisted they go and clean everything up inside the school. But this came on upon people suddenly. Now, I don't know if it happened yesterday or today, the onset of this, this flu-like symptom that they've labeled it gastrointestinal something or another. But 200-plus people... Um, vomiting ferociously some fainting okay so that that's uh that's a little curious uh fact as well going on in california and it is not going to load up trust my word for it uh or look at the link yourselves which i will post but as i say at this moment we got a nuclear plant shut down over radioactive steam and uh, should that escape that will be bad god bless you all take care whoever sees this it's getting pretty sketchy evidently an extremely small amount of radiation was released from a nuclear power plant in california and here's an image of the onofre nuclear power plant it's another one of those plants that should have never been built right on a very active fault line. And the photos from Mike Blake of Reuters. An extremely small amount of radiation could have escaped into the atmosphere from a Southern California nuclear power plant. After a water leak prompt operators to shut down the reactor, a utility spokesman said Wednesday. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission spokesman, Victor Dirks, echoed that, saying that a small amount of radioactive gas could have escaped San Onofre Nuclear Generating Station on the northern San Diego coast. Southern California Edison spokesman Gil Alexander said the amount would have been extremely small and possibly not detected by monitors. But they're not saying if the monitors did or not. The company and federal regulators say the release would not have posed a safety risk for the public. A reactor at the plant was shut down Tuesday night after a possible leak was detected in one of the unit's steam generating tubes. Southern California Edison on Tuesday said in a statement that a precautionary shutdown of Unit 3 at the electricity generating plant was underway, but that there had been no release of radiation to the atmosphere, and there was no danger to employees or the public. The San Onofre plant is on the Pacific Ocean coast near San Clemente, north of San Diego. It consists of two units, number two and number three and number one. Number one was shut down permanently in 1992. It is one of the two nuclear power plants that generate electricity in Southern California. The other is the Diablo Canyon plant in San Luis Obispo County. Number two at the San Onfre was already offline for maintenance and refueling but Southern California Edison said the shutdown of number three would not affect the supply of electricity to customers. In September, the failure of a major transmission line between Arizona and California caused the unoffering reactors to go offline automatically. And I don't know if you guys remember that September shutdown. Um, there was places that was without power for like three days. Another thing you should note that often when there's a problem with a nuclear power plant, they will cover it up by stating that it's being shut down for maintenance and refueling. Good morning, Bill. This is the San Onofre Nuclear Power Plant. I want to give you kind of a look around here because this is the biggest power source in Southern California, 2,200 megawatts. It is a massive facility that gives power to about 1.4 million Southern California homes. A lot of focus on this power plant today because clearly it is built right on the ocean. It is in earthquake-prone Southern California, so we talked to the experts today, and they say it is all about redundancy here at San Onofre, because they believe the most powerful earthquake that could hit this area is 6.5, so they built this to withstand a 7. They believe the biggest tsunami that could hit here is 25 feet, so they built the wall 30 feet. Look at the dome again, if you will. There are two of them. The concrete on the outside of that dome is from four to seven feet wide. They say it could easily withstand a strike from a jetliner. But if ca catastrophe 
did strike here. Here's the key, and here's the problem right now in Japan, is that when this happened, they could not get power to cool the reactor. And here they say it's all about shutting it down and making sure you have the power to the facility to cool the reactor. They have diesel backup generators. They have battery backup generators in case the diesel goes down. And if all of that fails, there is also a gravity system in place that could cool this generator, Bill, this reactor. That is the big key when you're talking about a nuclear power plant that is this size. 80,000 people live within 10 miles of the, uh, of the area. Bill. Interesting note there. Trace Gallagher, thanks so much. Nuclear regulatory officials are still investigating the release of radioactive steam from the Byron nuclear power plant. Yeah, that plant is just southwest of Rockford. One of the Byron reactors lost power and the steam had to be released to relieve the pressure there. Anita Padilla is following all the latest for us. Good morning. Hey, good morning to both of you. Well, the good news here is that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is saying that the Byron plant is in stable condition and neither the public nor the workers are in danger. But the question is, why was there this loss of power going into the nuclear power plant in the first place? Because it is that power loss that caused one of two reactors to automatically shut down. And that's when the backup generators kicked in for the safety equipment that ventilates heat from the reactor. So a lot of people heard this whooshing sound and then they saw the steam being released from the plant, but that was done to help the plant cool down. Now that steam does contain tritium, which is a hydrogen isotope with low levels of radioactivity. And critics say this releasing of steam is happening way too often. No numbers at all at this point. And you think they owe us specific numbers about the release of radiation? Absolutely. It's a billion dollar federal regulatory agency. It's a public record. We should have that information. Also, some people reported seeing smoke from the on-site transformer, but the emergency responders did not find any fire there. Also, um, the uh, emergency responders, as I said, did not find any uh, information or any fire at that location. But again, a lot of people are keeping their eye on this situation, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or the NRC, is saying that the last level, of, last level one incident at the Byron plant occurred back in 2008, and many people, obviously in that area, following the events of Monday's accident, Accident, but a lot of people who live at that plant near the plant say that they're actually quite used to it. So interesting. Back to both of you. All right. Thank you, Anita. Well, there are six operating nuclear power plants in Illinois. Exelon runs all of them. Three plants, Braidwood, Dresden, and LaSalle, power Chicago and its suburbs. The reactors at a plant in Zion were retired in 1998.